Where are you going? Where are you going? We're gonna make a video for YouTube. You gotta stick around. You're the Keytar Kitty. This is Mitty the Keytar Kitty. Yeah, that's right. So I have been planning another Keytar video very soon. It's got an outline. The top of this page says vaguely. You wanna know how I'm a disgusting excuse for a human being? There's a trash can that's like right over there. I'm just gonna throw a can of wrapper on the floor. Here I am. I'm dressed kind of like like if we were roommates, you'd probably see me dress like this a lot. Some days I put on eyeliner and I brush my hair before I do a YouTube video, but today I'm just I'm just talking. I don't know what sound I love. I'm not quite sure where the microphone is on this camera, but this sound. That noise. Where it like hisses a little bit when you pull it apart. I can't get a good one. I think that's the mic. I will clean this up after I film this video. I promise. I don't know. I love that noise. I left this notebook in my car instead of in here where I should have put it. Also, all of my batteries are in my car. I bought a fuckload of batteries because everything I own seems to run on AA batteries. Except my guitars that run on 9 volts. Uh... And my hella fucking cool Soviet synthesizer. So, fun story. I was, uh, I was at a thrift shop and they had a couple, like, rack mountable sound things. And I was wondering if any of them were cool sound modules. And so, when I was walking through Life Morning. I was cold. Well, I must have looked a half a person to tell the tale in my own version. It was only then that I felt whole. Um. Anyway, I, uh. Shit, fuck, what was I saying? Anyway, so I was at a thrift store looking at some musical stuff and this guy comes up to me and he's like hey what are you looking at and by this guy I mean he was in like his 40s 50s he was a person who was significantly older than me and I was like oh I'm checking out this compressor here and it was like a rack mountable compressor he goes oh it's a compressor I was like yeah it's a compressor it says it right there and I had my phone open, because I was checking the price on it, because I'm that person. And he's like, oh, did you Wikipedia what that does? I'm like, I am aware of what a compressor does. And I wanted to know if I wanted to buy it, but yes, please continue questioning my knowledge of this subject. I just met you, and this is crazy. I'm just trying to buy stuff. Do you want to buy this? Are you gonna... Are you gonna undercut me? Just be like, oh, well, you don't know what this is, so I'm gonna take it. Because then you'd be a douche, but at least you'd be a douche with a purse, like a purpose. You would be doing something. If you're at a thrift store and you see somebody looking at something that you want, and you decide to go over there to prove to them that you deserve it and they don't, you're an asshole, but at least you're trying to do something. You're trying to get something. And they've got all the music gear behind the counter, and so I talked to the guy who works there, because this guy who's been talking to me does not work there, he's another customer. And he comes up to me, or I go up to the, the guy who's working there, I say, cool, can I take a look at that headphone amp? And so, I was like, I wanna... I wanted to look at something else that this guy who was really determined to prove that I didn't know what a compressor did, um could go look at the compressor. Um, and I take all the sliders and I make sure they go up and down. Did I, I had something kind of sad happen to my Vortex. Sorry, Mid, you're not gonna like this. 
<laughs> Look at that! Oh, I don't know if you can see it, but I'll light it up, then you'll be able to see it. So some of you were, as I'm trying to tell the story of how I'm competent, but I keep getting distracted, but um, some of you were on Twitter when I realized that the Vortex uh, power cable is just a really long printer cable. But so, here you go. And then, as you see here, one of my sliders fell off. So that's one, two, three, four, five, five nine. So, anyway, I go back to looking at this headphone amp, and this guy goes, same guy again, goes, why are you so interested in this headphone amp? I'm like, you know, and he's like, you know, it's not the kind that you plug into your guitar. I know what a headphone amp does. Well, I can tell where you plug in the input, where you adjust the volume and the gain. I can tell what a headphone amp does. And he's like, do you do anything with old tech? And since I just got, maybe you're gonna hate me again. I had just received this beast in the mail. And so that was fresh on my mind, and I was like, oh yeah, I actually collect keytars. And obviously, because we, the keytarists, are somewhat ostracized in this world, who's like, oh, like keyboards. And I was like, yes, like keyboards that you strap onto yourself and run around the stage upstaging the guitarist. Keytar. And so, my friend, who was there with me, was sort of like sensing that I was ready to get into a fight. She's... she's familiar with my bad decisions. I actually just got a Soviet guitar, and he looks at me and he goes, It's called Russia. Like, yes. But, it is a vintage guitar from the Soviet Union, so it is a Soviet guitar. This guy was getting kind of like, Grumpy and my friend at this point is like, hey, I picked out my books at this thrift store So we should go and get Thai food. And I was like, yes, I'm down for that. So anyway, that is a 12 minute long ramble of mine about the first time that I talked to anybody About this very heavy Soviet guitar. I'm not gonna do like a full review of it. This is called the youth 21 if you translate that and I was told by somebody who actually reads acrylic that it's pronounced in Russian like Junost, and it came out very shortly after Roland released the Juno synthesizer. There may or may not be a connection there. I don't know. Juno, Junost. Maybe it's just a time thing. Uh, and it is very heavy. It is a polyphonic, fully analog synth, where all the things were in Russian and I had to translate them with my phone. Do you guys want to hear how it sounds? Probably. Let me get the cable. This does not come with a standard quarter inch out, as you can see by that being very shiny. Um, my friend Lost did um, some work on this. It had a, I believe, a five pin connection, kind of like this one, uh, but that transmitted an audio signal. So he swapped that out for a quarter inch jack, and then this is, this part is the cable for the power supply that it came with. Power supply from the Soviet Union does not work in California in 2018. So he built me a new power supply with pink with pink cables. So that's really cool. Where am I? Oh, it is on. Cool. So it's got... I always want to be like, oh, it's got five octaves, but I always have to stop and count, so hang on a second. We got... It's got three and a half octaves of full-sized keys that are um, not velocity sensitive. It, on the neck, we have a volume control. Apparently my amp is too quiet. It's, you can't hear it quite as badly on 
my actual keyboard amp, but it does make a huge amount of static. In Soviet Russia, the static deals with you. So it's got a master volume over here that's still refusing to be loud. It has, up here on the very end, I love this actual controller right here. That switches between union and a chorus effect. Uh, it has a pitch bend wheel that is the world's most useless pitch bend wheel. See, like, a true useless thing is a thing that, like, you interact with and it does nothing. A fully useless thing is a thing that you accidentally interact with and it does a bad thing. So pitch bend works like a normal pitch bend wheel. You go... But there's no snapback. I think that's about right. You just have to kind of hear where it is. If I want to play this instrument with other... Uh, with other people who play instruments, then musicians, that's what they're called. If I want to play this with other musicians, I have to pull out my guitar tuner and tune it and then not touch the pitch bend wheel. So it doesn't just have a useless pitch bend wheel, it has a wheel that is the opposite of useful. And then it's got one octave shift. Um, it's got LFO. It's got, um, that's your, so they're labeled weird things and I just Google translated all of them, but it's got LFO, it's got your envelope, it's got your filter, uh, your, you know. Of course your cutoff is like, in this really awkward place. It says it has 12 presets, but they're... One where your attack is so slow. I think that we're going for like a pad sound there, but your attack is so slow that you're basically. Okay, for some reason this one's just not working. Um, if you want to just get into the raw sounds it can do. We're gonna have to hear it over my heater, because it's fucking cold. Uh. So those are your, uh, your waveforms there. But I mostly just have been going with wave number three when I'm feeling like it. And it is polyphonic. I think it can do six notes of polyphony, which is cool. Um, I really, if I could design a guitar that's an analog synth, I would put cut off up here, because that's the thing that I mess around with the most. Obviously, I'm still like a little innocent baby at analog synthing, and I don't know how important the cutoff is when you're a true analog synth master, but um, I wish I could like swap out the pitch wheel. If I could put the pitch bend here on a slider where I could see it and like put a piece of tape and put the cutoff here where I could like really play around with it instead of this useless wheel I can't touch that's right next to the wheel I'm gonna play with a lot. Um, how many minutes do I have left? One? Is that one minute? It is four minutes, cool. That's basically it. Oh.
Hands are not working today, that's what the arthritis gloves for. I play that as sort of like my default um, testing out a synth because it goes over a couple octaves, but also it's in B flat minor, which makes you feel really clever. Time to reset the camera. Cool, I've got six minutes to finish this up before the battery dies and I have to pull all the footage out of it anyway. So, uh, general review of this cam of this keytar. It doesn't have normal strap buttons, so I'm gonna need to get like a strap that'll fit this. I have the original strap, I just don't want to rip it up for the strap clips. I could do that. Um, but it needed a custom power supply and it needed somebody who knows what they're doing to swap this out for a audio cable. First guitar, probably a bad one, unless you're already an electrician or a keyboardist, or both, or live in the Soviet Union, which is gonna be hard because, as that guy explained to me, it doesn't exist anymore. Thanks, dude. Just tell your wife that you had to buy it because this girl on YouTube told you to. Uh, but I collect keytars for like really specific reason. Uh, shit, I'm gonna go way too long. I gotta delete some off the camera so I can actually talk about this. Fuck. I totally had a topic I was going to talk about, but I had to go back and delete some footage and I don't remember what it was. So I'm going to have to go back into the what I just recorded and rewatch the last like two minutes to figure out what subject I was on. Okay, remember what I was talking about, and uh, we gotta go fast again because the battery's dying. But, uh, so I have just listed like 10 reasons why this keytar is not really like a great keytar, especially as a first keytar. I mean, first of all, I have, let's see, one, two, three, that's a harp, three, four, five, six, seven keytars in this room. So it's not my first keytar. If this was my first guitar, I probably wouldn't like guitars as much as I do, but my first guitar was the SHS-10, it's the world's most easy-to-use guitar ever, unless you want to get a really good sound out of it. But I don't collect guitars to get the greatest instrument in the world. Uh, I just want to establish, because I know somebody's going to end up on this video because they were considering buying one of these on eBay. As of 2018, December 2018, almost 2019, three days away from 2019, this was not a particularly rare nor a particularly valuable keytar, despite what people are going to tell you. I had a friend of mine go onto Russian eBay, because he speaks Russian, and they're like 30, 40, 50 dollars in a lot of places. And that doesn't mean that you can get one for 30, 40, 50 dollars in the United States. But it does mean that when you're looking at the value of something, you have the historical value, and this is cool, it came from the Soviet Union, it's a Roland knockoff. It's, you know, whatever. But you also have to look at the functional value, and it's heavy, and it doesn't have a whole ton of flexibility in sound. Uh, you are going to need to do a lot of work to get it to run on American amps in American power. If you're going to be buying one, don't go spending five, six hundred dollars on one. Don't spend the same amount of money you would spend on a functional guitar unless you know for sure that it's in particularly good condition and particularly rare. That's just a basic rule of everything. I collect antique sewing machines and it's the same thing except instead of fighting old guys in thrift shops who think you don't know what the Soviet Union was, you're fighting grannies with knitting needles. And let me tell you, that's scarier every day of the week. You don't want to fight a granny who's holding knitting needles. They don't fear death and they will stab you. Yes, they will. They'll stab you. That said, I collect sewing machines, and I also collect sewing machines that don't have particularly high functional value because they're cool, and this is cool, and it's really fun to stand up and play it. It's like just really satisfying to lie down in bed and play. This is probably my favorite curl up in bed keytar at the moment. I have enough keytars that I can have a favorite curl up in bed keytar and a least favorite curl up in bed keytar. Okay, one more thing, just just throwing this out there, guys. If you see somebody who you think is cool, who is involved in music, um, I know you're not a douchebag guy, but girls like me deal with douchebag guys when we're just trying to do stuff we like. So there's a tendency to get a little bit defensive when a guy comes up to you and they're like, hey, do you know what you're doing? So here's just a tip for picking up chicks. And that is, if you know something, if you see a girl who's involved in something